This is the second and probably the final video that I'll be sharing from our experience in Nepal. And the point that I wanted to just drive home for you here is that here in America, we have this idea of self-care. In Nepal, there really is no concept of self-care. And so what do we do with that concept? There's so many ways that we can get help and get the information we need about our bodies and research and do the things that help us lead healthier, happy lives. And it's not something that we should take for granted. We have a concept for self-care and we have the amazing means to actually take care of ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, so join me in the appreciation for the knowledge and the means for self-care. Not something we should take for granted. Okay, welcome. This is the second video that I'm sharing with you from Nepal. We are high up, way up in the mountains. We're at 9,600 feet. Uh, we had to go over a 10,000 foot pass to get here. And uh, we've been here at this monastery uh, with a medical team, a large medical team. There's about 16 people here, and we're going to see 2,000 people over four days. It's intense. Myself and one other yoga teacher here were offering yoga, and they they were in us we're in this tent. This is like a probably a six person tent that we're in. There's a heater over here, and a funky funky setup for lighting. Oh my gosh, I just want to share. It's it's primitive. The images that we see of the Nepalese people, these beautiful smiling faces with bright shiny eyes. It's really incredible, the, the love and the light that comes through. But the body awareness is nascent. It's almost zero. They know how to do just, it seems to me, a couple things. They work in the fields. They're mostly all farmers. They carry weight on their head. And I would say probably 80 to 90% of the people that we're seeing in here have knee pain and back pain, usually low back pain and knee pain. And what's really funny, uh, well, funny in a in an interesting way is the translators, it's really difficult to do without a translator. So every doctor, every one of us has a translator assigned to us. And I'm teaching the yoga through the translator. And the translator, I've done this so many times with knees and low back that the translator started to figure it out. And so at one point, I was able to just step back and let him teach the yoga. And it was really, really cool. We've worked with several translators, and they they really enjoy this process. We're all learning a lot. There's a monastery here. We're we're going to be seeing people for for uh, well, it's three and a half days. We did a half a day yesterday. Today was the end of a full day. It is uh, six o'clock, and we started at eight with an hour and fifteen minute lunch. Uh, I probably did thirty privates today, and most of them with knee pain and low back pain. And so um, doctors, there are two rheumatologists here. Those are doctors who specialize with joint pain. And so I was explaining the yoga a little bit to him, how joints like compression. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, yeah, because when you start to compress a joint, the osteoblasts and the osteocytes and the chondroblasts and the chondrocytes, it's the physiology inside us that it activates. And he said, yeah. And then, and then I said, and, it, and as you start to put the pressure on the synovial fluid inside, he finished the sentence and he said, and it moves the synovial fluid through the, through the membrane, through the synovial membrane where it gets cleaned up. And I just was like, oh my God, I loved hearing that. It's, so we had this lively conversation about this. And so he became very interested. There's lots of miracles, lots of really beautiful things happening here. And I could say 
the blessing. So they, the marigolds grow wild here. There's marigolds everywhere. And they, they, they use these cloths, which if you look closely at them, yeah, if you look really closely at them, they have the same symbols in them as the prayer flags. It's kind of hard to see, but um, it's kind of like wearing a prayer flag. It's very subtle symbology, but it's a auspicious decoration, symbolic of peace and prosperity and happiness. So we've been all the volunteers and the medical doctors here were were adorned with these things over the lunchtime so uh, that was fun and that's why i just thought i'd wear it to share with you there's a peace and a joy and a happiness that just lives in the hearts and minds of these people we can see it in the pictures that's why we love seeing these beautiful pictures with nepalese people and that peace and that joy must supersede the ailments that they have in their bodies. Well, I'm going to do a tiny bit of yoga here. In situations like this, the I, I've already mentioned how in travel, the yoga becomes more abridged. I have done a fair amount of reflecting of the, how much gratitude I have for those, for the space and clean, clear walls and clean air and clean water and in clean food we are so blessed to have that as these these folks here are overcoming a lot of odds so many times i just i, I would want to know you know could I'll, I'll say this in a private session with people. Do you have an MRI report or do you have an X-ray or something that we can get a little more information of what's going on inside? And that's impossible here. And so all the doctors, everybody wants more information to be able to do tests and things like that. And they've done a remarkable job of having resources up here where they can do some of those things. But uh, we're all operating on a shoestring and seeing one person after another. Oh, and by the way, Lori is here, my wife. She's she's behind this whole thing. She wanted to do the dental uh, mission. She's here with two Nepalese dentists who are two years out of school. They're in their mid-20s. And so she's teaching them a ton while she works on teeth. They told her that the dentist is the most popular person. And sure enough, well, we all have lines. Every one of us has lines out the door, people just waiting. It's one person after another. So she's working her tail off, and she has two assistants helping her and a translator. And I thought I'd share my MO with being able to do about a 15 or 20-minute private session with these people. Some of them actually have an iPhone or a, a mobile device where we can actually do a little recording and shoot some a photograph of each shape that I put them in. And uh, so that's working. Otherwise, they just have to remember the three things. I'm giving them three things. And mostly what I'm giving them, I'm just going to have a moment and do myself because it's going to feel good. So Sukhasana. And the other beautiful thing that is waving through my mind right now is the beautiful thing that I'm finding that the the yoga that I'm sharing does for these folks is instill a sense of peace and joy. It's dark outside. It's cold. There's a there's a heavy mist in the air. It's, it's raining off and on, and it's it's uh it's kind of desolate and we were shutting down we just kind of had a hard stop and there was one person who really wanted to do who wanted to see us and the other yoga teacher had already left so it was just me because I was sort of sticking behind to do this and I said first I asked could he possibly come back tomorrow no 
he, it's a, it's an hour long Jeep ride to get up here. So he had many people are walking in, some are jeeping in. So I couldn't say no. And I'm so glad I saw him because he really got the yoga. He really dropped in. That dropping in, and you can just see it in their face. The same way I can see it in, in anybody's face when they come into a shape and they they resonate with the sensation. The fear goes away, and all of a sudden it clicks. This is okay. This is healthy. This is good for me. I'm gonna switch my legs. The hips are are remarkably mobile and healthy. Not a single hip issue out of all the people I saw today, not a single hip issue. No one wrote it down as a complaint. And when I put them in shapes, their sukhasanas look a lot like this one. Their knees drop. Most of them can curve forward. But I think a lot of the symptoms and problems come from the sheer amount of labor that they do. The lack of of a mindset that includes self-care. And that, by the way, is the biggest topic that I wanted to share with you. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to finish at least with you for now here in Malasana, which is a pretty common way for a lot of these folks to sit, but it's but some have lost the ability to have Malasana. So as you know in Avita Yoga, everything we do in one way is to resolve the restrictions to allow us to squat deep flexion on all the joints. We see people sitting like this often, just waiting in line today. And this morning I saw someone squatting like this, a Nepalese guy just hanging out, sitting like this. And one of the American volunteers rushed over and gave him a chair to sit in. And I just, I wish I would have got that on video. And he sat up in the chair and maybe he was more comfortable, but he was no better off for it. And it's true. People can sit like this for a very long period of time. And as we, as we squat, so many benefits to the joints and bones and contents of the belly. It's one of my go-to shapes throughout the day. When I'm working with people, my back might get a little tired or something gets a little sore from, and maybe I, what happened today, just a moment ago, actually, go off, relieve myself, go to the bathroom, and then just have a minute or two of reprieve in Malasana. It's, it's quite restorative. Okay, so I'm going to finish with an idea that struck me, and I shared it in our in our uh, brainstorm. Not really a brainstorm, but a um, debrief last night after dinner. What I shared was uh, 
how I realized in America, we have a concept called self-care. And we have the prerogative to do self-care or not. Almost everybody knows about something they can do for themselves, whether it's going for a walk, having a meditation, going to the gym, getting a massage, some form of self-care. It's a, it's a well-known concept in the Western world. And what I shared is here, it's not really a concept. The idea of self-care is quite foreign. A lot of the other volunteers and doctors uh, agreed, and some came up to me and said, yeah, that's a, that was an interesting insight. And uh, it's just something that I picked up on working with these people, because even with a, even with an, a translator, the movements were so foreign, like the, just the idea of bringing the knee to the chest. Like, I think they're really good at relaxing and just kind of hanging out, and they're really good at working. But being in their body and relaxing in some of these shapes and different things like that was um, was very new. And it was really fun to watch things settle down. And I feel like people are going to, um, I think they're really going to benefit. I get the feeling they're going to do these, these shapes, which mostly what I taught today was knee to chest, sometimes sukhasana, every once in a while a little bit of strap work. Um, on the foot, for the hands, sometimes for the wrist, for a little bit of wrist pain. And for those who could sufficiently bring the knee to the shoulder, I was teaching Virasana, a version of sitting back on the heels. And so sitting on the heels like this, some people would would just really drop in and feel the compression and feel the benefits. So pretty sweet. I think it, I think the Avita yoga really is a nice match for their constitution and for their culture. So it's a lot of work, but I'm having a lot of fun. So just some insights I wanted to share. I hope you find it inspiring on some level, maybe inspiring. And if not, nurture the gratitude oh my gosh we have so much to be grateful for thank you namaste